Hey, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. So today we're gonna to be talking about the 2024 model year Lowrider ST. Now the Lowrider ST first came out in the 2022 model year and it was probably the most popular bike and probably the most impactful bike in the 2022 model year launch. This was a motorcycle that a lot of people were asking for and a lot of people just had high expectations of Harley Davidson coming out with something like this. And when they did, they didn't disappoint, they nailed it. The Lowrider ST serves so many different riders. It serves the riders that want a middleweight cruiser that still has the handling properties and the power to weight ratio of a bike like a Lowrider S, but it combines that with highway comforts with the touring orientation of some storage space on there as well with the saddlebags that can be removed. So you have that versatility baked into the bike as well. Another reason why this bike hits so hard with so many people is just the overall styling of it. And the fact that the fairing is a modernized version of the retro FXRT Sport Glide that was first debuted in 1983 on the shovel head and then it debuted with the Evo motor in 1984 and the FXR today is one of those bikes that's extremely popular especially in the club scene the guys that really like a smaller fairing a middleweight cruiser the guys that prefer bikes like the Dyna and the modern day Softail a lot of them prefer this type of styling that gains its heritage from bikes like the Lowrider, a lot of the Dyna bikes, the Lowrider S in modern history. And so the Lowrider ST has been easily the top three best-selling bikes since it first came out in the 22 model year. And at least for us, and I think probably in the country, it's been the number one best-selling soft tail bike as well. So it is now back for only its third model year in the 2024 model year. And honestly, mechanically, we haven't really seen very many changes at all since the 2022 model year when it was very first debuted. And I would say that's very justified because when the bike first came out it was a hit it's still a hit they really didn't pull any punches when they designed this thing the bike has Harley Davidson's largest displacement at the 117 cubic inch actually technically now it's the second largest factory displacement with the launch of the new CVOs that now have a 121 cubic inch but in the non CVO realm the 117 is still the largest displacement and this bike has it you've got all the features that come also on the lowrider s things like the taller shock in the tail end the inverted front forks you have dual disc brakes in the front you have a lot of the bronze highlights throughout the bike on the wheels in the graphics on the tank on the air cleaner the derby cover cam timer cover these bronze highlights are becoming synonymous with Harley Davidson's racing or performance oriented bikes and when I say racing I'm referring to their king of the baggers team and Harley really did carve out a niche in the 2022 model year with all their ST models that they launched that year bikes like the street glide ST the road glide ST and you had the Lowrider ST and even the Lowrider S can really be grouped into their sport touring or the more of their performance focused genre of bikes. So in a nutshell, if you're looking for a Harley Davidson that has a lot of the performance focused features about it, that is also a touring long haul capable bike as well in the mid-weight chassis of the Softail, then the Lowrider ST is a very good option for you, especially if you like this style. I think the two motorcycles that you'll probably shop this bike against within the same family, the Softail family, would be the Softail Heritage, which is the other touring focused bike within the Softail family. I think if you're looking for more of a classic nostalgic look, then the Heritage is going to be the obvious choice. With the Heritage, you have a windshield, you have leather bags, you can get the bike in chrome or black, you have more of the large fender look on it as well. You're lacking some of the performance driven features like dual disc brakes, inverted front end. You still do have the taller shock in the tail end for a little bit better ride comfort out at high speeds on the freeway. So if you're going for the nostalgia play, then I would probably steer you towards the Heritage. Now, if you're someone that doesn't really care about the fairing, doesn't care about the bags, maybe you don't like that look or maybe you wanna put a different fairing on the bike, then the Lowrider S is gonna be a good option for you. The fairing on this motorcycle is not designed to be taken off, so it is not a quick detach fairing. So if you don't like this fairing, or you want the versatility of having a fairing that comes on and off, then this bike is not gonna be the right option for you. It is not like the Sport Glide that we saw a couple years ago in North America, where you could take the bags and the fairing off. However, I will say that I like this fairing and I prefer it infinitely more than I did the Sport Glide fairing. Functionally,
unfortunately, it's just going to keep a lot more wind off of you than the Spork Light ever could. I believe the Spork Light is still available in international markets like Europe and Australia, but the Spork Light was discontinued in the 2022 model year in North America when the Lowrider ST first came out. The controls are basically the same thing that we've seen over the past more than a decade. Very simple metal control switch housings, big buttons, very tactile feel. You do have electronic cruise control as a standard feature on the Lowrider ST, and you also have traction control, which was introduced last year in the 23 model year. Traction control is similar in function to what we've seen on the Touring models in past years. On the Touring models, it's called Reflex Defensive Rider System. As part of that RDRS package on the Touring bikes, you also have Hill Hold Mode, where you squeeze the brake and it locks the rear brake and so you don't go backwards on a hill when you're standing still at like a stoplight or something like that. And you also have electronic tire pressure monitoring on the Touring bikes as well. You do not have either of those features on the Lowrider ST, so it is only traction control and it is not lean angle enhanced with a six axis IMU. So the system captures data from the wheel bearing sensors and uses that to identify if you've lost traction and then compensates for that lost traction to keep your tires from slipping on the road. The saddlebags are nice and sleek. These are the saddlebags that we first saw in the 2018 model year on the Sport Glide. They're kind of a clamshell style where you've got this lever on the inside of the bag. Like I mentioned already, it's easy to quick detach these bags without any tools. So if you're going for more of that sleek look, maybe you want to shed a few pounds, you pop them off. These bags are definitely not as big as the saddlebags that we see on the Touring chassis bikes. Without looking up the exact measurement, you know, anecdotally, I would just say that they're about two thirds the size of what the Touring chassis bikes have. And the Touring chassis bikes, just because of the way that the lid opens up and everything, it's just easier to cram more crap into the Touring chassis bikes than it is these clamshell Lowrider ST bags. That being said, I think they're proportionate. They fit the bike very well. They've been extremely popular in the last six years that they've been available through Harley Davidson. The fit and finish on them is great. That's one thing about these injection mold bags. None of the aftermarket companies can come even close to replicating them with the same level of fit and finish. So the bag is nice. The plastics are really nice and thick and high quality so the bags are very durable the wheel design is a very traditional lowrider design that's one of those looks that never really gets old you've got a 19 inch wheel in the front a 16 inch in the rear 180 millimeter width in the rear you've got the largest fuel tank available in the softtail line at five gallons the other one being the three and a half gallon that can be found on bikes like the softtail standard the street bob and like the fat bob the lowrider st comes in at a running weight of 721 pounds so you're about 120 pounds lighter than a touring chassis bike the bags and the fairing on the ST do add about 40 pounds more weight when compared to the Lowrider S. A Lowrider S is about 680 pounds running order weight and the Lowrider ST at 720, you are adding about 40 pounds. But honestly, that's weight that's well used, especially if you're looking for the extra storage and the wind protection on the Lowrider ST. The 117 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 is gonna put out 125 foot pounds of torque and about 95 horsepower. It comes with a solo seat, so you have no passenger accommodations, no passenger foot pegs. The seat has a little bit of a step up in the back, so you do have some of that lower lumbar support, which is nice on a bike like this. It's a little bit more performance driven. You do have the LED reflective daymaker headlamp in the front. It's the common five and three quarters measurement. You've also got an LED tail light in the rear. The front and rear turn signals are all halogen bulbs. The front fork suspension is not adjustable on this bike. However, the rear is adjustable. You can adjust the preload on the rear shock. You need to take the seat off and there's a wrench that comes with the bike. And with the wrench, you adjust the mono shock underneath the seat to set the preload based on how much weight is on the bike, the weight of the rider and weight of the passenger if you have one. Again, you'll need to purchase a different seat and add pegs if you want to put a passenger on the back of the Lowrider ST. The motorcycle does come with Harley Davidson's security fob, just like all the other bikes. Comes with one fob, it's a proximity sensor. With this proximity sensor, you have keyless ignition, so you just hit the run switch and the ignition fires up. You have a couple keys that come with the bike. The keys are used to lock the bags and also for the fork lock on the neck of the frame.
So Mickey recently bought a Road Glide ST and so he's been putting, you know, several hundred miles on the bike by now. And so I wanted to include him in this review so he could give us kind of a, a real direct comparison between the Road Glide and the Lowrider ST. And some of you may have seen our video where we compared these two fairings and I'll make a, a link in the upper right hand corner of this video so you guys can check that out if you want like a real detailed look at the comparison between these two fairings. But I thought I would get Mickey's just right off the bike immediate reactions to this bike and this fairing and how it compares to like a Road Glide for example. I would say touring bike if you like touring bikes but this bike is a lot of fun even having touring bikes my last two bikes have been three bikes have been touring bikes and this thing's a lot of fun like i'm used to the seating position now that i've ridden it a little bit more and um it doesn't bother me as much i don't know how it would be sitting on it seven eight hours a day but in that scenario i definitely want to take the bagger but this bike is a lot of fun it's very intuitive like you just think about turning and the bike just leans and goes the fairings on par man I, I don't really have a problem with it it's uh i had the rt fairing the road glide fairing street glide fairing this fairing they all do a great job um there's a lot to be said for a, a factory fitted fairing as opposed to an aftermarket fairing just fit and finish is better so yeah i mean if the price point is right versus the bagger and you're not going to do any overnight stuff you're not taking a passenger uh or if you are doing overnighters it's once or twice a year this bike is totally sufficient the 117 is fantastic uh comes in a, a significantly lower price point than the 117 bagger but that's not to say that the bagger isn't worth the extra price point because you are getting a lot for it i do really i like technology so i like the rdrs system i like that the brakes are linked i prefer the rear brake on the bagger over the soft tail that's not my favorite it's a little bit mushy the brakes are linked on the bagger so i can touch my rear and it's also braking front for me so I, I i prefer a lot of the features especially with an rdrs on a bagger over the soft tail but i think for the price it's an absolutely it's a game changer bike. it's a swiss army knife man it does everything it does everything really really well are there other capabilities that are better on the bagger sure but you're also going to pay more money for that it rides great man I, I i could ride that thing all day i have a lot of fun on it every time i take it out for a test ride i like it i i honestly don't even hate the bars and the seating position in the stock seat like this bike is one of the most complete factory bikes like i think it requires the least amount of stuff outside of this and a full dresser to where you just need slip-ons on a full dresser and this i i don't i don't hate the bars i'm six one i got long arms and the bars are totally fine for me um if you like the tall bars then that's for you and if you're going to put a passenger on it obviously you need to change the seat but I, I really don't have a problem with the ergonomics of the bike nine out of ten guys that test ride this bike end up buying this bike it's it's really that nice what do you think of the color i like the color i'm not a i don't i don't, I don't have a problem with this whole color thing and uh i don't think it looks like gunship gray it's a little bit lighter it's got a different color i don't think it looks like gloss primer i think it looks like gray um i think it's a good looking gray for me personally the pegs i would put forward controls you wouldn't put forward controls on yours mickey if you bought one no no i, yeah. I would keep the mids uh i have an fxr with mids and it's fine it's different i wouldn't want to sit on it for 10 hours a day I'd, i like i said in that scenario i would definitely prefer the bagger um, but I want the lean angle, you know, I want that more aggressive stance. Um, I could potentially see, you know, my, my knees are above my hips, so it kind of rolls my hips back and I'm more on my tailbone than I like to be. But for short rides, commuting, day rides, right down to San Diego and back, I don't think it would be an issue at all. There you have it. I'm a little bit taller than Mickey by about five inches. So yeah, that, that effect that he describes a little bit more magnified on me than it is him, you know, with my knees way above my hips. And so yeah, I think if you're six foot or below, you probably don't need to even consider the forward controls. But I think if you're six foot or, or taller, you probably that's kind of the territory where you might want to consider doing forward controls on this bike. So I'll give you guys a couple more pieces of information that are pertinent in trying to decide whether or not this bike is right for you. And I'll give that before I go to my final review and comments on this bike. So MSRP has gone up this year. It's gone to 23,399, but there is no surcharge this year. So if you account for the fact there is no longer a $750 surcharge, and I think the $200 traction control that was a factory option last year is now included. The price has not gone up this year at all. It's pretty much the same 
price. So no increased bump in the 24 model year, I think, which is big news. So you're paying about $3,400 more for the Lowrider ST than like a Lowrider S. I know that's a bike that's it's gonna be compared frequently to the Lowrider ST. And I've said this before, if you can benefit from the fairing and the storage of the saddlebags, then for $3,400, it's a slam dunk. Nice big fairing like the one that you see on this bike. It's gonna be very difficult to get something that's comparative from the aftermarket. And if you do, the aftermarket's never gonna be as good. It's never gonna be as tight and the fit and finish is never gonna be as good. And you're probably gonna be paying at least $2,000 right there for just the fairing. So the incremental cost of $3,400 to get the ST over the S is definitely worth it. Again, if you are looking for the fairing in the bags. So there's really two types of guys that I'd recommend this bike to. One, the guy that is shopping between this and a full touring chassis motorcycle and I would steer you towards this if number one you definitely like the power to weight ratio it being more favorable on the lowrider ST if you like to ride a little bit more aggressively and you like the weight savings of the lowrider ST when compared to the touring bikes or maybe this bike just fits you better if you're someone around that 55 to 510 range even if you do a lot of touring you might prefer the lowrider ST chassis just because it fits you better than a big touring bike I think the bottom line that people really should know and i can't stress this enough if you are an all-in touring guy kind of like what mickey said earlier the touring chassis bike is still a better motorcycle all things considered for touring application you have more storage the fairings do deflect wind better than this lowrider st fairing i think if i had to quantify it i think this fairing in my personal opinion is only about 65 percent as good as like a road glide or a street glide fairing in terms of wind in deflection the touring chassis bikes up at high speed for a long duration time like if you're going 65 70 miles an hour plus for a really long time the touring chassis bikes are just smoother and more planted out on the open highway for high speeds for a long time this bike will do it no problem but the bigger touring chassis bikes i feel like are just a little bit more comfortable and if you're logging hours and hours and hundreds of miles in a day the accumulative effect of the touring bike can be felt more and more the longer you're in the saddle every day. Mickey also mentioned electronics. That's kind of a big one for me as well. There's no infotainment system in this bike. You can, for $1,000 extra, get the Rockford Fosgate speaker pod that Bluetooths to your phone, but the fairing touring bikes, so all the touring bikes besides the Road King, have the infotainment system with the navigation, the communication that you can Bluetooth to your headset, a little bit more control over your media, music, and things like that with the the screen on the touring chassis bikes you have better passenger accommodations better sissy bar options you have better more plush seating options for the passenger as well so if you're riding with a passenger a lot they're going to be more comfortable on a touring chassis bike especially if your passenger is on the larger side but for a fairing bagger you're paying on average about ten thousand dollars more than this motorcycle Overall, at the end of the day, the Lowrider ST has been an absolute smash hit. It combines the performance and the style that so many people love in a Harley Davidson, and it gets you what I would consider base level touring utility. I think the value on this bike is extremely good. And on top of that, the resale value on Lowrider S's and Lowrider ST's is outstanding. So as far as motorcycles are concerned, the Lowrider ST is a very safe investment for your hard earned dollars. The bike isn't like an Indian where the value just plummets and depreciates. At its core, you've got the Milwaukee 8, the signature air-cooled V-twin pushrod motor that so many people love the character of. This bike is just a winner in every sense of the word, and my prediction is this is going to be a very popular bike moving forward in future years as well. Thanks a lot for watching the review, guys. We really appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you're looking for a Harley Davidson in Southern California, make sure you hit us up here at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson, where we have absolutely no added dealer markup. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video if I was able to help you out, and we'll see you on the road, guys. Later. Later.